I was live just a while ago uh, to emphasize on the importance of visceral perspective in physical therapy and also to enlighten the followers of this page and the members of the AYMPT about the value of the upcoming course the Viscerosomatic Manual Therapy VSM Specialist which is beginning from 10th January 2022. As we are approaching this professional issues uh, series, it's been a very popular series. I'll tell you one thing. Um, I am giving my inputs when I am feeling convenient and viewers are watching. It's most watched videos are the professional issues uh, videos, the webinar videos. And they are watching at their convenience and everyone is happy to exchange their thinking and uh, queries with me. So it's always a pleasure to involve in some kind of an effort to showcase the existing scenario, the history and the evolution and also analysis of perspective, the pros and cons of every type of education and of course definitely the most important is the suggestions for the future. This webinar, the 158, this webinar is titled the BPT syllabus, the Bachelor of Physical Therapy syllabus and an undergraduate curriculum which is the foundation knowledge which the students are getting transformed into professionals. Not just a, a technical or industrial professionals, they are healthcare professionals. So and we need to understand this uh, curriculum and the syllabus. What is basically you are trying to differentiate between a syllabus and a curriculum? Syllabus is a written uh, form of the curriculum. Okay. Curriculum is what happens in the uh, reality, in practical uh, scenario. Okay. So that is actually that is happening. So for example, framing the curriculum is a thinking process that what the student undergoes in the first year, what the student should uh, come out of the first year with and then second year, third year and then the subsequent internship when they are graduating. So that is curriculum. Syllabus is to do with the model of instruction. So that means for example to give a guideline on what could be, what are the subjects that could be possible in each of these years, how many hours it has to be. And most of the times the syllabus is oriented only to the academics. Whereas curriculum cares about extracurricular also. Some of the extracurricular activities may be including the cultural performances, the sports performances and of course you also have this academic itself extracurricular that is quiz and also paper or poster presentations. All are part of the curriculum. But the syllabus is only for a drafted material as a reference for maintaining a basic level of instruction to do with the, what is called as the professional domain or the academic or the knowledge domain. Syllabus do not give about how many hours a, a student has to uh, engage in sports. Nothing is mentioned in the syllabus. And the syllabus never provides about how much cultural activity has to be there. Okay, What types of competitions has to be held between um, individuals, our students? Nothing, nothing. It's not given in the syllabus. So what I'm trying to tell is, and also this career guidance, uh, training the students how to give interviews, how to prepare a resume, 
okay how to develop uh, themselves as a entrepreneur it's not the self employment or a business it's entrepreneurship is higher level i don't think any syllabus provides this and syllabus includes information on subjects some of them are not for exams uh, that is also there in the syllabus i know that all across india i have seen many syllabus and i can confidently tell that these informations are missing in the syllabus now coming to the individual perspective from the bottom students what is important for them curriculum syllabus during admission the parents will always ask for the curriculum because they want to know what is the holistic development that the child will undergo in the college but nowadays the college admissions happen without parents because it is perceived as professional education students directly come to the college and the university with their documents because they have completed higher secondary they come all alone they come with a check for the fees payment and they are enrolling in the courses and they are getting back teachers most of us don't even know who the parents are and of course the ugc has kept guidelines that the parent teachers meeting has to happen regularly we'll be thinking oh my goodness schools there were parent teachers meeting college also parent teachers meeting college is for freedom this is what the child thinks the student thinks okay they never bring the parents into the picture unless the parents are themselves jumping into the picture okay if at all any kind of an indiscipline where a teacher tells that i have to talk to your parents the student i have known students who actually bring dummy parents they ask their friends parents to come as please uncle aunty come as my papa mama arrange that some students went to the extent of providing money to the workers in the university and that worker they brought them as my father okay students are also very smart in all the other things other than academics and you see here syllabus is always seen by the student mostly by the class representative because the class topics are getting covered or not so they check topic wise they take the syllabus topics are given these are the subjects the subject teacher is coming uh, for that subject maybe two three teachers may be there so which are the topics they are covering they are not covering the class representative or the class monitor that student maintains that they might also maintain a log book of the topics that is covered and they take the signature of the faculty at the end of the class they also sign and they submit that class log book to the principal weekly there are different things that happen in different institutions because these are all basic requirements of nac the national assessment and accreditation council they want documentation that the subject coverage and how the classes which hours how many hours what is called as the syllabus hours may not be same as the teaching hours nac always emphasizes that teaching hours have to be more than the syllabus hours so if the syllabus tells a particular topic 5 hours it means that teaching can go up to even 10 hours but what happens here is the student only checks the topic wise nobody checks the hours and getting through with okay the daily things responsibilities and moves on near the exam at the end of the year all students see the syllabus okay because they want to not to miss any topic okay in their preparations they can collect materials take notes from their seniors 
and uh, schedule a preparation window while approaching the university exams. That time they might find that many topics are not covered. It's reality. And then you see for, they ask that concerned faculty that these topics are not taken. The faculty says, these topics are already part of that topic. I have already taken there. So that one and this one, this both topic, na? that only this topic. Oh. Anyway, nothing is taken because towards the near the exam, no faculty takes anything, any classes. If the students come back with this topic is not covered. And then the students are inquisitive to know about the topic. So they will ask the faculty, I have a doubt on this topic. Uh, I am not able to find anything in my notes. Uh, other people are also not understanding. Please explain us, sir. So they are asking like a doubt. The teachers easily dismiss that question by telling that that topic is not important. You don't worry much. You study the other topics. But they don't want to explain. That's the fact. And, uh, and uh, I'll come to the teacher's perspective, which is a very, very uh, sad part of the story. Uh, but what we have is a student's perspective where near the end they are seeing and nothing is happening. And if they go to the principal and they represent and they are handing over telling that 25% of the syllabus is not covered and we are really afraid how we are going to face the exams, please help us sir. The principal says, you don't worry, questions will not come on those topics. This is, I am talking about the deemed to be universities with the A double plus ranking. Okay, so many universities have got that A plus plus and all that in NAC. Ranking does not matter at all in reality if you don't do anything good. The fact here is lies, lies on this. The principal instructs the faculty that, okay, these five topics, don't put questions when you are setting the question paper. So they don't ask questions from those five topics. And then persons who are evaluating the answer sheet after the exam. Again, it's an internal faculty because if uh, ABC university is there, private university deemed, I'm mentioning private university and deemed, they have internally paper setting, internally evaluation. Even if external papers are received, the internal department faculty, they moderate that paper or modify that paper and then only it goes to the controller of examinations after the principal's approval. So people can eliminate a question. Okay, so what they have not taught does not come in the evaluation or exam and students are happy as long as they don't get that same topics which were not covered and afterwards at the end of the times passing marks and all that are automatic but the year has passed by the academic year has passed by without learning those topics I am not concerned about the topics because some topics are important some topics may be less important but what I am trying to cite here in this example is a bitter truth which every college is facing. Every student knows this, the class representatives know that. Sensible teaching faculty who is responsible and passionate also knows these stories are happening in their colleges. Why I am not commenting about government institutions is because the main reason that I have not worked in a government institute. But I have interacted with many students in the government institute and there the story is more what is called as a degraded because there is a feel that we are government institute and nothing will happen nobody can remove us from the job whatever we do or don't do nothing matters faculty or the principals are in their own world 
barring very few government institutions in India, I am not going to name any institution which is good, which is bad, I am not going to recommend. But there are equally good, there are equally the other side also institutions. They have good clinical uh, load, okay, in government institutes they have good hospital, good patient load, everything. But when it comes to actual education, which is like uh, balance of observational and experiential learning. We talked about it yesterday, the previous webinar, students' issues. So here we are talking about the syllabus. So always remember that wherever it is, whether it is government or private, it's all about the individuals who actually maintain that value of that syllabus. History. Earlier, Bachelor of Physiotherapy was only three years. Later, it evolved to become and include the internship, which is extra six months. Now, the Bachelor of Physiotherapy program, the BPT, is four and a half years. That means four years of academics every year the calendar and six months of internship some institutions proud to mention the name christian medical college well known they have internship for one year four years of college and one year of internship in the hospital of course they have clinical postings for students right from uh, um, first year secondary itself okay so they keep coming to the hospitals what I'm trying to note here is they are successful in one objective that MBBS the Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery they have five years and they have four academic four years and one year of internship which is called as residency and all the programs but same way the BPT is coming there this is very few. To my knowledge, only this place where one year of internship. And then next to the things come about, internship is like almost a pre-degree, pre-professional, before qualification. So when they are working in the internship, the students has to get a stipend. Again, to my knowledge, only very few institutions which are government institutions are giving the stipend. To name a few, Sri Vivekanand National Institute of Rehabilitation Training and Research, S. V. Nirtar, Odisha, provides stipend together with, of course, the NIOH or the NILD, okay, National Institute of Locomotor Disabilities, these institutions. And of course, the Government Institute, uh, Chennai and also Trichy in Tamil Nadu. And also the Government Institute of Physiotherapy at uh, Chhattisgarh Raipur, I came to know that they are giving stipends. Jamia Millia Islamia, the Government Institute, Central University, I know that they give stipends. So this is something which is an important part because when the students are coming into a clinical area, they should feel that they are a clinician. They are learning. They are being evaluated, but they should get that responsibility or that accountability which comes with stipend. Definitely. Because every healthcare professional is working honorary, yes, to help the poor people. But most of the times you see that they have invested for their degree and they are using this as an occupation. So that means they have to earn money. Some are commercializing it in a different dimension. That's totally out of the context to talk today. But what's important here is to ensure that we need a system of uh, uh, standardization. Okay. Uh, why is there a difference in the syllabus between different colleges? Okay. So a person who is graduated BPT or MPT from one college is appointed as a faculty for another college. But that faculty has not studied those subjects 
which are there in the present college, they have not studied that in their previous college. So how can these faculties teach these students? So they might feel incompetent or insecure to teach those topics and ultimately the students are the sufferers. Uh, how to maintain a standard syllabus, the same syllabus? This is about syllabus, you know the curriculum heterogeneity uh, as I was telling three, uh, three years, the four, uh, four years, four and a half years. Now it is uniformly four and a half years. Almost all the BPT colleges in India, four and a half. Barring the few which provide five. Otherwise you see the story here that semester system versus annual system. The biggest clash comes there. UGC has recommended that other than the mainstream medical courses, medical, dental and the Ayush, Ayurveda, Yoga, Yunani, Siddha, Homeopathy, Ayush, other than this and the medical and the dental, all courses have to be semester system. That means every others are considered as technical, not the clinical. Because clinical cannot be semester system. UGC also knows that. The problem with semester system, to tell, to cite some of the examples. One is, vacations get split. Okay, the annual summer vacation what the students get will be split because every semester at the end of it, end semester holidays. Like that it will come. And semesters shorten the teaching days. So if you have 208 days, teaching days in a year, huh? people who are listening might be wondering, huh? 365 days in a year, 157 days are holidays. To take an example, first is Sunday. 52 Sundays gone, right? After 52 Sundays, next is government holidays, including the festivals. Diwali means how many days holidays? Dasara means how many days holidays or Navaratri? Pungal in South, how many days holidays? So everything comes, all regional festivals, Onam, Bhagrit, Ramzan, different religious festivals. Everybody enjoys that uh, the glory of God in those holidays. Okay? So after the 52, another 26, half of that comes in these holidays. Government holidays, including the Republic Day, Independence Day and uh, other uh, big... Uh, person's birthday or death anniversary, anything that is declared as the holiday by central government or state government. Some of the state governments also have the uh, state uh, foundation day. So they give a holiday on that. Okay. I am putting it as 26, but the number can be more. But still let's see how much it comes. So 52 plus 7, 26, 78. Half of that has come out of the 158. Half is covered. Okay. The next thing comes here. Comes to holidays. Preparatory holidays before the exams. Two weeks. Shortest is two weeks. Fourteen. If you have internal assessment exams, that may be shorter here and there, two, three days. It might go on. If it is semester exams, one semester, one week, another semester, one week. This is the minimum duration preparatory holidays. If one week, if I tell itself, students will be getting heart attack. No, 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 we need one month preparatory holiday. Because students are studying only in that one month. I am talking about the 90 percentage of students. I tell the word studying. Students are learning the whole year, but they are studying only in the last one month. 
That's the beauty of the exam and the preparation is. And after that, what they do actually is, these holidays two weeks, yes, I'm putting two weeks. I don't know how to put that number. I'm not going to put higher numbers. We are going to see what happens with the lowest numbers in everything. Okay. So you have this 14 days excluding Sundays there because you need to give some uh, 15 days you keep. Okay. And after that you have days of exams. Sometimes there are uh, gaps in between the exams and the exams usually go for one month. Usual standard period, theory, practical, all when you actually run through with the schedule of the exams and the timetable, it goes for one month eventually. Sometimes between theory and practicals there will be number of days. This I am telling for one semester, so another one month goes there. If it is shorter, maybe three weeks or whatever. And post exam vacation. If it is annual means one month minimum. June is the exam over. July fully is holiday. August only reopening. If it is semester, two weeks, two weeks is divided. So one month for exam and then one month for the post exam holidays, 60. And after that two weeks, preparatory, 74. And you have uh, the 26 days of government holidays, 100. And 52 days of Sundays, 152 days, toying. So 365 days, you have only 208 days. That is the minimum guidelines framed by the UGC that the teaching days should be at least this much for an annual system. For a semester system, it's only hardly 100 days. They are even okay with 90 days. Remember, 90 teaching days means out of 180 the six months of a semester, half the number of days only is teaching. And you are expecting the students to know full subject as per that is scheduled for that semester. So the semester system makes the students to become more and more active. They are telling that it's a student-centric curriculum with more assignments, more projects, uh, more different types of uh, classes to be arranged and organized including weekly quiz and uh, internal assessment tests, tests should be based upon an end evaluation and ongoing evaluation. So both the things are there. Finally with the exam also marks are coming and throughout the year their performance also every time the marks are being given for every activity that the student does. Be it an assignment, the scores, uh, be it a conference presentation, everything will be added there. So finally what happens is, it clubs up, it makes that learning to become uh, what is called as a technical or mechanical one. Worst part is the faculty in the semester system. They are marking the attendance in the online uh, or the software version in the systems. And of course they are entering the internal assessment marks. They are entering university, everything in the system, system, everything. All the technical computer work is done by the teaching faculty only. And in the end they start feeling that Am I a teacher or I am an office uh, assistant? Every teacher is overloaded with the computer work to such an extent that they are like, even after the college, they are logging into the college system uh, through the common portal, e-learning portal to upload their uh, PowerPoints. Uh, because that is the rule of the UGC that semester system means the learning um, 
platforms e-learning platforms also should be active because students will miss the classes because it's credit credit based evaluation so these credits can be transferable they are called as general credits they are called as uh, what is called as the proficiency professional credits general credits can be learning english language or french german any language they can learn that is general credits it's absolutely a mess i'll tell you the word m e s s because none of the principals are adequately trained in this method of evaluation very few may be barring very few i'll tell you one thing because this suits only the technical education not the healthcare professional education okay a b or b tech or arts and science they can use that very easily because their curriculum matches that but in the medical one it's impossible so because of this reason the semester system is not successful and what we have in phys physical therapy we have a syllabus which is named as model curriculum the nomenclature itself now you can be clear what they framed is only a syllabus but they named it as a model curriculum in that only you can know <laughs> and inside that of course it is framed by max uh, you know very good experts of physical therapy all around india and under the ministry of uh, human resource development so mh rd rd mh rd if you are putting model curriculum bpt mpt the pdf files will come from that official website of government of india but how but the syllabus is not adopted i don't think so even in 10 percentage of colleges those who are having semester itself they have not adopted the mhrd syllabus okay so that means there is a failure in the system in what way either that syllabus is wrong it's not realistically made taking inputs of all the principles or the principles are to be questioned that why are they not using the mhrd syllabus because when it is been published by the ministry of course it's not a strict enforcement that you have to follow the syllabus it's a suggestion it's a guideline but when it is framed approved by the ministry and made by experts around 35 physios or somebody they are all very senior physios they all uh, sat together and they discussed and then they framed the syllabus so what is wrong in adopting the mhrd syllabus if we need a standard syllabus the best example is the government one which is central government which is ministry of human resource but even then if you are doing a exploratory survey of all these colleges which are using semester systems they are not using the mhrd syllabus some of them who are using the mhrd syllabus have adapted that syllabus to their convenience some subjects they have removed some other subjects they have uh, added some have been converted from exam going to non exam going and uh, and you know that the moment a subject is labeled as non exam going that means university exam do not have this subject in the papers what happens to the learning of the student is ah uh, then no need to study they are right because no need to study but there is a need to learn that is why it is not in the exam those who are in the exam are only for the studying those who are not in the exam is lifelong the example is research methodology in undergraduate curriculum is not an exam going paper how many principals can stay silent for this experts like professor arnachalam dr siddiq are trying to improve the research yes of course i have taken many research courses also and publications but what i am trying to tell is still the solution will never come until the undergraduate curriculum incorporates research as an exam going subject if not bio biostats it's fine 
because I have heard from one of my teachers, she used to tell, why do you want this subject in that uh, BPT? You mean to say that if you fail that subject, you are not a physical therapist? Look at her thinking. I am speaking about uh, Professor Kavita Raja, my faculty at Manipal University. She was there when I was doing my masters. So she used to tell, you think that uh, we need these subjects? If the students are failing in those subjects, they are not eligible to be a physical therapist. But if you think like that, there are many subjects like that. Pharmacology. Maximum BPT students are failing in that pharmacology. And what are we reading the drugs for when we cannot prescribe those drugs? See, reality has to be seen. What's important and necessary for reality? That only should be there in the syllabus. It's an exam going subject. And on top of that, nothing is happening in reality. And students are failing year after year in pharmacology. Next worst example is biochemistry. Anatomy and physiology, biochemistry together are called as the preclinical subjects. Understanding biochemistry is important for lab investigations. Even exercise induced biochemical changes, the exercise physiology, depends upon biochemical parameters. So it's very very important to see that. But do we need it as an exam? Biochemistry exam with all these ABCDs? 1, 2, 3, 4. I feel like myself, Tare is a Minpar. All the stars are there on the board when the biochemistry class is going on. <laughs> so it's very very difficult for a student to actually memorize and then do that in biochemistry. And why are you keeping it as an exam going paper? When a physical therapist cannot prescribe lab investigations. Yes, of course we are prescribing conventionally, but it's not legally or officially sanctioned by the authorities that we can prescribe a lab investigation. Okay. So remember one thing, we want to be called as doctors, first and foremost, oh, so 100 years, Professor Arnachalam sir, okay, hats off to you. So what is important here is, we need to think of the way forward, okay, and see that uh, papers like pathology and also there are some more uh, in the list like this microbiology okay all this could be for learning but not for exam because physical therapist is not going to treat the virus or the bacteria infection in the patient okay it's a mainstream medicine what we need is a competency based education what do you want from a physical therapist? How their perspective of movement analysis should be? How their perspective of functional rehabilitation should be? How their perspective of um, a patient-centered clinical reasoning should be? And more importantly, problem-based learning not the disease conditions. What happens in our present existing syllabus is the kids are made to learn pathology, they learn rheumatoid arthritis, clinical orthopedics comes, in that also rheumatoid arthritis, PT orthopedics comes, in that also rheumatoid arthritis. What is the use of Repeating that rheumatoid arthritis clinical features thrice. And the worst part is that is zero positive, zero negative arthropathies, ankylosing spondylitis. Yes, big role of physical therapy. I do not underestimate that. But there are conditions like Ritter syndrome, conditions like uh, fibromyositis, polymyositis, collagen vascular diseases, uh, scleroderma, systemic lupus erythematosus. 
connective tissue disorders everybody every physical therapist knows that basically it's a problem oriented approach if it's a systemic inflammation is there during that stage what should be the physiotherapy treatments if the systemic inflammation is active phase is subsided then we go ahead for the mobility which is functional mobility because patients are advised some kind of activity protection and rest during the heavy dose of medication which are usually steroids and after that when they are starting there should be functional mobilization and also the affected joints has to be encouraged to mobility and then activity oriented training and getting back into normalcy if it is work then it is vocational rehabilitation everything comes in the picture as a continuum if it is specific restriction of the soft tissues you can do joint mobilizations at the late stage subacute and you also see that myofascial adhesions are there you can do friction massage or you can do releases if there is an entrapment neuropathy you can uh, mobilize the nerves so this is the problem oriented thinking stage wise as per the polyarthropathies be it rheumatoid arthritis or be it ankylosing spondylitis of course the joints that are affected in rheumatoid arthritis versus ankylosing spondylitis is different but ultimately what the thinking process has to come as a clinician is the problem oriented approach because patients come with that symptom and then you see for late stages in a polyarthropathy is to do with the splinting because we need to uh, ensure that the deformities don't set in which will affect the functional uh, uh, what is called as independence of the patient and if some patients who have fixed deformities how to give activity modification or assistive devices we need to simplify the education we are complicating thinking that uh, we are teaching something very advanced to the students and uh, ultimately what happens in that is remember the 208 days of instruction in a year and every year 8 hours of working day in that 8 hours there is 1 hour lunch time another half an hour half an hour morning break and afternoon break so 2 hours gone only 6 hours are there in that 6 hours in a typical teaching day let let's look at on it very seriously otherwise it's a mockery prayer attendance initially end of the day definitely half an hour gone so what is remaining five and a half hours yeah because two and a half is gone one hour for lunch half an hour half an hour morning break and afternoon break two and another half an hour for the prayer and the attendance all these things so two and a half hours gone every class it's fixed for one hour do the teachers teach one hour one side that is the question quantity other is what is teaching some teachers are going to the classroom they are just doing chit chat with the students i am telling this word with maximum shame okay as a fellow teacher the college teachers go there just to talk about something here and there stories and they pass 15 20 minutes others are there they go take only the slides put it after the slides give that a print out or the handout as notes to the students and tell that class over students are light is off because lcd projector is going to be there they are like wow and after that when the material has come yeah 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 give me one photocopy cr will be photocopying give me also one photocopy keep all the photocopy in the folder 
one month is there na preparatory holidays that time we can see that why to use the brain when the therapist the teacher himself is not using his brain the teacher is only coming just using the pen drive and the powerpoint see one thing i'll tell you if the teacher is not able to use the blackboard teacher has to put on his hand he has to write he has to draw diagrams at least a schematic flow chart he has to make himself he should be the role model to show it to the students that i can remember you are younger you are more energetic you have more fresh brains you should be able to easily remember make it easy for them and lead from the front unfortunately the reality is different and after that you see the next step quality versus quantity the teacher thinks syllabus has told one hour topic yeah 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 all these are there okay subheadings i know what are the things okay just mention something about all the subheadings syllabus has told one hour so one class is enough for that right they underperform keeping syllabus as a upper limit what is the mistake or the blunder that they are doing is syllabus is not upper limit it is the lower limit syllabus is a basic requirement you have to teach beyond the syllabus teachers are thinking that syllabus is the roof if syllabus tells short wave diathermy they teach disc electrode pad electrode continuous mode short wave diathermy and they take for one month in electrotherapy with practicals even now i am speaking to this undergraduate students and i feel that 1997 to 2022 25 years have gone but the instruction is attitudes in the college typical level i am talking i am not generalizing very few students words into a national level but remember one thing the honestly everybody knows this that this is the truth that i am talking and you see that massage one and a half months for massage upper limb massage lower limb massage back massage neck massage face massage are physical therapists doing massage ridiculous they are so much advanced be it as soft tissue mobilization fine be it as myofascial release fine be it scar massage no problem deep friction massage manual lymphatic drainage that's fine see these terms one side and see the other term of upper limb lower limb massage trunk massage back massage abdominal massage neck massage face massage it is like a spa center we are teaching the students rather than teaching them deep friction massage manual lymphatic drainage scar mobilization soft tissue mobilization myofascial release trigger point therapy or even cupping <laughs> i am bringing the safe for controversy the cupping but remember whatever that is there it's all under massage only you do a dynamic cupping you are moving on the body it's a soft tissue it's a massage effect is there it is releasing the tissues deeper because of the suction effect or when you do this with the movement synchronizing this so it's a functional effect is there syllabus gives massage syllabus gives a fluoraj petrisaj needing a frictions all that finish it off in two days take these things manual lymphatic drainage deep friction massage everything you take this 
because these are the things which the student has to know as a physical therapist, not as a massage therapist. Who is stopping the teacher from teaching these techniques? Nobody. Because no principal interferes in the teaching faculty what actually they are taking. Subject has to be covered, subheadings has to be covered. Cover that fast because it is the basic requirement. Cover this in depth because it is the best requirement to groom the students into a best physical therapist. If it is shortwave diathermy, take what is called as pulsed shortwave, pulsed electromagnetic energy and also extracorporeal shockwave therapy. Wondering what sentence sir, what happened? This is the truth which you have to follow because you cannot wait for change in the syllabus. You have to change the application of the syllabus. I will come to the principles, okay, that is much more uh, uh, harsh, okay. I have been a teaching faculty, I have taught for more than two decades. I have never stuck to the syllabus. All my undergraduate students study all the content which I am taking in the workshops. Workshop or classes, absolutely no difference. And I don't take my classes one hour today, one hour tomorrow, one hour next day because student cannot retain the information for the next day. One hour, one hour it will get scattered, they are prone for diversion. So what I do, I take three hours in the afternoon, half a day, take the topic with breaks, workshop. That is the best model. That is why it differentiates resource persons from teachers. Because teachers are stuck to the syllabus, resource persons are having a higher commitment to knowledge, to learning, not just to studying. Unfortunately, resource persons are being branded as they are commercial. So something that is commercial means wrong. Hey, which college is allowing you to study BPT free man? You tell me. You paid the fee for 200 teaching days. You paid at least 80,000 fee, annual fee. Per day 400 rupees you are paying for every attendance in your college. And in addition the exam holidays whatever, exam fee also you are paying. In addition you are paying library fee, bus fee, hostel fee, everything is fee. Is it not your responsibility to ask? We are not clear, our syllabus not covered. Do it won't come in the exam means you tell. Then why it is in the syllabus? Remove those topics. Why keep it and then you don't teach it? If we are doing a mistake means immediately you are punishing us. The teacher has done a mistake. Don't leave them. See if you have integrity, if you are honest, you will definitely stand for the truth. You will not be afraid that principal will fail you. How many people they can fail? If everybody stands together means at least your juniors will get benefit. Because one thing you remember, quality teachers are leaving the colleges. They are leaving the colleges and they are starting their own academies and federations and foundations and they are teaching uh, as an entrepreneur because the best teachers are not having the environment in the college to teach beyond the syllabus. They are either looked upon, they are publicizing their workshops so they are teaching extra or they are self-projecting themselves as knowing extra, other teachers are not knowing so they are teaching too much to the students. Teachers issues is a very very big uh, section which I am going to take subsequently. Unfortunately in this the whole scenario has become totally an irreparable mess.
and it is part and parcel of everybody's blood now that just be happy with whatever that is happening chalta hai in hindi somehow get that even the faculty was going for evaluation also is told that make sure that not much failure and all push everybody okay. you can pass everyone i am not telling that pass or fail is going to be a best outcome or the a grade or the c grade what you got is going to tell you that you are a best physiotherapist or a worst physiotherapist nothing but remember because the students and the parents are bothered about the grades only they are not bothered about what exactly the student knows results i tell two things college management they are bothered about income the fees that they receive and the outcome which is the results in the exam so the principal is always responsible for coming now we have come to the principal that they are responsible for admissions so they have to fill the seats principal means because income has to come for the manager so they have to counsel the parents convince the parents tell the students that you can prefix doctor you can immediately get job we have campus placement after 6 months the story will be known that nothing happens in reality and these principals are also important because they are answerable that students are failing also the management they'll call to ask that why this many students have failed last year 10 percentage students failed this year 20 percentage students have failed no sir students are not interested in study what is this you are the principal you should make them interested in study no sir teachers uh, they are not properly teaching hey it is your responsibility to see make sure that teachers are teaching properly so it backfires on them so what the principal does is सबको पास कर दो लेट एवरीबडी पास फेलिंग इज नॉट अ मेथड टू रेक्टिफाई द स्टूडेंट इन कंपिटेंसी ओके बट वॉट आई एम ट्राइंग टू टेल इज कवरिंग एप ऑल दैट पैच वर्क इट्स गोइंग टू मेक द रोड वेलनरेबल एंड द डेज आर नॉट फार दैट वी आर गोइंग टू मीट विथ एक्सीडेंट्स if we travel on those roads we need a properly laid road right from fundamentals strength is fundamentals and of course with the recent advances and the shine in the road and the areas where the friction has to be there in the road the friction has to be there where the speed breaker has to be road there on the road it has to be there the reflectors has to be there road street lights has to be there everything is important same like that to prevent an accident why i am telling is in a healthcare profession the accident is very costly we are now living in this third year of this pandemic after 2020 now 2021 last year and 2022 this year the third year is because of an accident that happened in the laboratory to the animal the meat market in china hiv aids came into the world because of a laboratory accident only in south africa we are not going into the background behind this viruses and what exactly happened but remember one thing healthcare accidents are very costly it's about life and death as we don't require a reservation policy like a backward class most backward class schedule cash schedule drive getting an mbbs admission because they are schedule cash and schedule drive they can get mbbs but how will they pass the mbbs and if they do md and ms how will they do the surgery man 
Medical field has to be dependent upon merit and merit only. And that merit should reflect the reality. For example, in practical exams and evaluations, we usually now have internal external examiner which actually most of the time first three students they will take long time to evaluate the practical exam. Last 30 students it will be completed in one hour. Keep five six students together. I have taken the practical exam like that. Because the principal comes and tells me. And then out of the five students, one is answering also, all five you give the marks. Because <laughs> these students individually if you are asking means they are not at all getting the answer. Why that answer is not coming? The students are wondering, I am not able to remember. Knowledge is not something which you have to remember. Knowledge is something which you have to understand and apply your thinking process. That applied reasoning only makes you to become independent in your decision making. You are fighting for independence, autonomy in practice, doctor prefix and all that. In practical examination you should have OSCE, OSPE. That is O-S-C-E. Objective Structured Clinical Evaluation. OSPE. Objective Structured Practical Evaluation. So there are checklist five points which you have to do. One subject is sitting. Either a mock a patient or a real patient. On that patient you have to show components of this five. And for each component you are given marks. Right from communication skills. Whether you are doing the patient education. Whether you are concerned about the patient positioning. Whether you are demonstrating the technique and you are actually applying the technique. All five are given equal weightage. Don't think that you do technique correctly, you are becoming a best physical therapist. Never. No physical therapist who is a great physical therapist is basing their learning depending based on a technique. They would have become only technician. Everybody can do the technique. Clinician is the approach how you handle another human being. Listening to the patient, the active listening, empathy, the moral values which you actually pass on and the patient should feel that, wow, with this person I am safe. That itself will make them to feel better. That is called as healing. H for healthcare, H for healing and H for heaven. Remember and these students were passing out. Okay. I used to do some uh, mock uh, funny activities where the postgraduate student does the ultrasound. If I have to take a probe. Um, yeah. So imagine that this is an ultrasound probe. The postgraduate student does the ultrasound looking at the phone and doing ultrasound here and there. Okay. Ideally it has to be given at the acromioclavicular joint. But the postgraduate students seeing the phone and using texting, it goes everywhere and then correcting again it goes. Intern student comes, gives the ultrasound. And then what they do is ask the patient, you do yourself and they are using the phone. So patient is applying the ultrasound themselves. Okay. Whereas the final year student or the third year student is coming. They are lazy to do that also. They are lazy to tell the patient also that you do. So what they tell is I will hold the ultrasound. Okay. I will hold the ultrasound, you move the body. So patient move the body. 
movement scientist mockery remember responsibility has to be also taught by leading by an example right from the principal to the faculty and then it goes to the students syllabus does not mention these all things communication skills syllabus does not maintain interpersonal relationships syllabus does not mention uh, what is called as moral values are you training professionals out of technicians or you want to get a better human beings better citizens for the country who can make the nation proud with the way they can treat patients clinically with the way they can teach the whole world academically with the way they can perform high quality research and get it published in global journals scientifically competency based curriculum is the only thing that will actually solve the issue all those who are delaying this all those who are ignoring this are cursed because they are doing the crime the injustice towards the next generation making them their slaves rather than empowering them with creativity innovation and rational thinking applied reasoning i have just shared my feelings yes of course it's a wonderful evening and i'm really happy to see more people have joined the session but remember what we are doing together is what is success make sure that we direct the next generation empower them make them responsible stakeholders so that they raise their concerns and issues leading to a reformation in the system welcoming inputs from the participants who are watching me live live now of course love with lot of love somitra ghosh okay happy new year he is telling 2022 absolutely but remember that please put your inputs in the comments if you have any kind of queries related to the syllabus or the curriculum and definitely you will get my unique style of explanation for everything okay martina john midunil manish and sunil rai yes sir kya sir dr sunil is not joining any courses only he is so busy clinically sabiu dr ritu ma'am is always with the avmpt living avmpt she is so the first webinar on professional issues we had about the pt council and the regulatory body and the next webinar we had on the student issues and this webinar today we had on the curriculum and syllabus which is to do with the bpt i have not come to mpt and phd okay so there are things which uh, people should look forward to when they are joining a college of physical therapy whether attached hospitals preferably the same in campus hospitals are best not the tie up hospitals and the next is government or private both have their pros and cons government is good for the fees because it is lesser fee the entrance exams are competitive uh, merit based admissions most of the times but the cream students are going to an institute where the teachers are not that much serious this is government institutes very few government institutes some faculty maybe one or two maybe seriously they are involved and passionate to teaching 
and the next one you see for what is called as the degree, the value of it in the uh, perspective wise. Government institute degree is always more valid than the private university degrees. And next if you see for, but unfortunately you submit that degree to the credential evaluation when you are going to US or Canada. They will send an email to the government university and they will take six months to reply. But if it is a private university, they reply it immediately within 24 hours or maybe one week maximum. So credential evaluation process will be delayed if you are graduating in a government institute. Although it is more valid, it will be delayed. But the delay will be accepted by the credentialing agency because they also know government means unquestioned. Okay. Any country. So everything has its own perspective. In a private college, um, you want to join a college which is affiliated with a government university, that's the best option. If you want to join in a private college which is affiliated to the same private university, you are in for trouble because the system may not be very robust. They can cover up all their uh, mistakes and they can just run the show with minimal uh, investments. They don't sanction anything amount financially for the infrastructure and they are happy with whatever the income and the outcome which I was talking, not the process. Okay, They are not bothered about the process of teaching and learning at all. Okay, Very few private universities which are aiming for international students of course, as an alma mater of that same university, I am proud to mention that Manipal University, where they are maintaining standards because of the international market. Otherwise, if you see from one place, always the other place looks better. From the other place, this place looks better. Every place has its own disadvantages. But for a student, I will always tell, join the college which is attached to a hospital. Join the college which has very good teaching faculty. So it's the responsibility of the students to know the teachers before joining. Be it MPT or BPT. The teacher may be there or may not be there. After you join, maybe the teacher might leave the college and go. If it's a private college, they can change very fast. Overnight, the faculty will be asked to resign. Okay, Anything can happen. Even principals, they are appointed only before the NAC inspection. And after the NAC inspection, they are made to resign. So many things happen. Of course, our Indian Association of Physiotherapists has just forwarded the same MHRD syllabus without any much modification than putting the IAP logo in the first page. Okay. So it is kind of endorsed by our national uh, association so we can definitely use that. Previously our IAP was conducting inspections of the colleges. They were trying to see for the infrastructure, seeing for the faculty requirements, uh, seeing for the students attendance and everything. I think so that it was 10 years before. I don't think so that in the recent time anyone went for an actual inspection from the IAP side. But that system was somewhat okay. Nowadays what has happened is colleges can take membership from the IAP. It's not an uh, approval of the IAP inspection and all that. Nothing. It's just an application of membership. This is something which has to be really there is a scope for refinement. Okay? Because there has to be a monitoring body, if not in the council, at least as association level. And association, the students wing or the grievance cell should take action if the students are raising issues about syllabus or the curriculum. Representing the students and the professionals to the college and its management. I know it's a very tough job 
all over India you have uh, 300, 400 institutions and how the national body can do. The most important part is decentralization is happening in all the committees. Easily you can form an academic committee, we can form a clinical committee, we can form a scientific committee and then decentralize. People who are volunteering and willing to contribute for the betterment of profession genuinely and people who are with the exceptional or extraordinary talent and qualities. Involve everyone take inputs and draft a better syllabus. I, I am also aware that Dr. Narasimhan Swaminathan, uh, Professor, uh, he is presently working at uh, Sri Ramchandra Medical College and Hospitals, SRMC, Chennai. Sir has done a comparative uh, exploratory analysis of the syllabi, the PPT syllabus across various institutions in India. I am not aware of the study findings. But he was actively involved in that uh, that educational analysis perspective. Okay. He is also another expert who has been uh, advocating evidence-based practice. So we need evidence-based education. Then only evidence-based practice comes. And then only evidence-based research comes. Educational methods should also be researched. Particular syllabus has to be researched. Uh, the perspectives should be taken from the students. That should be researched. It should be reported. The advantages, disadvantages of different methods of teaching or the syllabus, everything should be researched. And then evidence has to be generated so that we pave a better way for the future. Of course, as Ritu Ma'am has summarized, we have to differentiate between the quality of the education that is provided versus quantity. Okay. Does not mean that uh, you study for 10 hours, you studied in depth. Okay. But one important thing is patient centered. It should be right from first year. And I am always proud to quote the government institutes which allow the students for clinical postings right from first year of their BPT, hats off to them. I think it's S.V. Nirtar, the Government Institute of Rehabilitation Medicine, Chennai, CMC Vellur, and also the Trichy Government Institute in China, Tamil Nadu. All of them, they allow first year BPT students to apply at least a bit of ultrasound, just the parameters are kept by the uh, other students and first years just to keep doing this or they do only the passive movements or they apply only the wax technical aspects they help the seniors so it comes as a vertical team right from postgraduate to intern to third or final year to the second or first year students and of course all of them are 360 degree monitored patient feedback uh, the clinical instructor or the faculty instructions and of course ultimately the students won't feedback how much they learned clinically how much it helped them in their reality because without what is benefiting the students whatever we do it's not going to have an effect positive effect so they should understand what change we are doing and why are we doing and they should be part of the decision making. Students council should be active in every colleges to keep reporting the feedback of the students about teachers, about subjects, about exams, everything. There should be a very transparent system and it should be monitored by a person other than the principal. stuff that is the thing which we are facing but remember if at all i in my description in this webinar i have uh, crossed my boundaries or i have uh, misprojected any of the institution or the teachers definitely it is totally unintentional 
and it is solely due to an unconditional responsibility as a fellow physiotherapist for the future physical therapist who is going to come forward into the life because patients know the value of physical therapy it is we physical therapist who should ensure that the next generation physical therapist should be the best and they should be better than us signing off professor santhil p kumar here for this webinar number 158 yeah we are reaching a target of 250 webinars okay and uh, we are going to have uh, always there are milestones to cross so wishing you all the best of luck and appreciating all your contribution and presence through your comments enjoy this evening and stay inspiring each other